Warning, the following program contains salt. Viewer consumption of water is advised. Okay, greetings shippers, welcome back. You know what time it is. It's time to make sure we have all our I's dotted and our T's crossed so that we can see all of the outcomes of this game, as many as possible. This has to do with Amanda. If you were here for the last stream, you know what happened with Amanda. We got the quote unquote bad ending with Amanda and the salt knew no bounds. I do wish things had been different. I guess I have a lot to think about now, huh? Like how I somehow ended up in the bad ending despite being a fantastic parent. Did we fail Amanda? Did Amanda fail us? Questions. See you later, Pops. I love ya. But not enough to tell you what's wrong with me or let you into my life, and that's your fault, apparently. Even though you're always here for me and will do anything for me and love me unconditionally. That's right. <laughs> I'm so salty. <laughs> I have to say I am doing this as a regular video for a couple of reasons. One, because I actually want to talk about where that salt is coming from and why I actually think that this is one of the weaker aspects of the game and gameplay. And two, because since I have to redo this, I have to redo a bunch of dates and that would be a bit boring for you guys to watch. I feel like you already saw the wonderful dad dates and that's what you're really here for. <laughs> Just dad dates that also have a happy Amanda ending. Before we get into it, special thanks has to be given to Murpug who stopped watching the stream where this was happening to go back and find out exactly when this moment occurred and what date it was so that we could go back and make the changes. Also special thanks to Artemis Wolf who then went even further and decided to research exactly what the potential quote unquote wrong decisions were that got us that ending. Not all heroes wear caves. Okay, so this is our first task where we will go and choose different options. I refuse to use the word fix because I do not believe that we made the wrong choices in the first place. Yet the game decides to punish you as if that was the case, but we will get to that later. Okay, so this is the part of the game where you come and you hear that Amanda, your daughter is crying in her room. Okay, so she's crying, 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 and you, like a concerned parent, go and ask her what is wrong. Okay, now according to what I've been told, and just based on how come it went wrong, first time, we're supposed to just leave her alone. I think that that is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> and I don't think that insisting on asking why your child is crying is pushing any boundaries. You would ask anybody why they were crying. I will ask once. And if asking once is enough to get the bad ending, I don't even know. Okay, ask once, go away. Also, okay, so she kicks you out of her room rather rudely, and in my opinion, very childishly, but we'll get to that again later, even though one of the things is that she wants her independence and to be treated like an adult, but okay, we'll leave it. Okay, so leave her alone. Let her come to us. Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with giving your child space and maybe they need some time to come to you and let their problems out. But the fact that insisting twice is treated like you've crossed some like horrible territorial boundary is a bit absurd to me, especially because we've seen Ethan or just your dad, Sona, act really irrationally in some of the other situations. I mean, one last time that led to his death, which was hilarious, by the way. <laughs> for a penny and for a pound, unhealthy. You're trying to one up me and making me feel insecure about myself. Throw a punch. I lunge at Brian with the best right cross I can muster, Ooh. but I completely miss and flip over the side of the carriage. My fingers barely holding onto the railing. Brian tries to help me, but it's too late. I fall. <laughs> my last thoughts as my body lays broken and spine on the floor of the fairgrounds around my daughter. Who will take care of her? What kind of woman will she be? I hope she can be spared the sight of my mangled corpse. <sighs> well, I guess she got her wish, didn't she? <laughs> So it would have been very easy to write in a scenario wherein he actually crosses a real boundary. 
That being, say, he went through her diary or her phone and she caught him doing that, that would be a real reason for her at the end of the game to be like, you know what, we need some space, there aren't boundaries, we need some time apart from each other. Very, very valid. There are things that he could have done that would have been true invasions of her privacy and space. Asking her twice if she's okay because he found her crying and they have this really close relationship that's been established and this is very atypical for her not to be sharing. Not a crossing of boundaries, in my opinion. This really bothers me. <laughs> All right, I'll leave you be. I back out of the room and close the door gently behind me. She immediately starts crying again. Wow, I have no idea what has her so upset because she won't tell me. But if I had asked twice, well, you know, that would have made me a poor parent. All right, she leaves and avoids us, comes into the kitchen. Okay, so here we go again. Here is where the second quote unquote error occurs. This has also occurred past the night when she stayed out past her curfew. And that was very atypical as well. So she just stayed out past her curfew and didn't act like, like it wasn't a big deal. Okay, so Amanda looks away. I don't wanna talk about it. I don't wanna talk about it, Jed. Give me my independence. Amanda, please talk to me. I feel like you're drifting away from me. That's what she wants. She wants her independence. Don't you understand, Ethan? Asking her what's wrong is terrible parenting. I'm only pressing because I care about you and I want you to be okay. If you're not gonna tell me, then fine. No matter how much you don't want, I'm gonna care about you. Uh, I reach out and squeeze her hand. Oh no. <sighs> All right. She didn't tell us. Welcome. You've got dads. I don't even know if that was good or not. What if we just leave her entirely alone? I'm so sorry. This is the saltiest playthrough. Itachi's gonna ask me again. Are you okay? <laughs> Are you all right? Uh, Amanda crying. Let me see. What if we just leave her alone from the start? Let's just be. Let's go full neglect. Full on neglect. Let's see. How does that work? I don't want to talk about it. Okay, bye. Whatever. I don't need to parent. Bye bye. Cry alone in your room in the dark. That's what good parenting looks like. Bye bye. Anything could be happening. Is she in drug withdrawal? Did somebody assault her? We don't know because we didn't ask, but that's good parenting. Bye. Back out of the room. She starts crying again. I left her alone. I spend a sleepless night wondering what could be wrong with her because I didn't ask. Okay. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about what's bothering her. About 10 minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her and makes a beeline for the freezer. Oh, oh, I see. We left her alone and now she'll talk to us. I'm so salty. You know what? At this point, I kind of just want the bad ending with her because I'm like, I don't agree with this. Okay, fine. Fine, we left her alone and she's coming to talk to us. If this had happened on my first playthrough, I think I would have been fine with it, to be honest. But because this and I think one other choice leads to her essentially severing ties with you for asking what was wrong, I'm not okay. <laughs> but you know what? I have to say, this proves that for me, at least this game is working because I care. I'm invested. I'm invested in this. All right, you guys haven't seen this and this is what you came here to see. Okay. Morning, Manda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle into the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on at school today? Uh. No. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? I mean, there's this horrible wall erected between us because all of a sudden you won't communicate with me and apparently I'm not allowed to ask why. No. Want some coffee? Coffee fixes everything. Amanda pulls the toaster lever up and takes her still freezer burned waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Oh, okay. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short lived, but it, all, it always hurts. 
Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at a picture of Amanda and I hanging on a wall. In it, I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knee, she would get up and try it again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. As I put the bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream and it was like nothing ever happened. After giving it a bit of thought, I decided that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. Yeah, you see, but you didn't tell that story beforehand, so it's not like we knew that that's what the relationship was like. So how could we make a proper choice except based on the bantery, fun-loving relationship we had seen before where you two seemed really close and like you would talk about stuff? I have an idea. Let me bend over completely backwards, even though she's an adult and she has part of the agency in this. That's the thing I think that's really getting to me is that it's not like she's 12 or 10. She is 18 and about to leave for college. She also has some agency in maintaining her relationship with her father. It shouldn't be an entirely one-way street where he has to act exactly how she wants him to act in order to have a relationship with her. I start rummaging around for ingredients. Let's bake a cake slash pie. I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline for her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin. I made sweet, sweet food. Please, I'm begging you, just talk to me. What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Ellipses. Yeah. I wanted to say sorry about last night. For what? What are you apologizing for? I wanted to say sorry for even daring to peek into your room when I heard you crying. Why are you apologizing? She's, it's almost like he's being gaslit. Like, this is awful. I'm sorry, but being a parent doesn't mean that you just have to be at the complete whim and mercy of when your children are being unreasonable. It really doesn't. Like, you need to be understanding. Yes. And now that they've explained the type of person that she is, why he has to do this makes sense. But this wasn't information that was provided beforehand. So before that, you just have to go on what you think would be the best parenting option based on their relationship, which would be asking her. I'm so salty about this. I'm so, so, so salty. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just, I can't, I can't even... Okay, I want to say sorry about last night. I'm so sorry for caring. Sorry for living. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong. I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Which I guess is usual because apparently I can't even ask you what's wrong without you threatening to end our relationship. Dad, I... So just... Whatever it is, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. It's like, yeah, your kids don't have to tell you anything, like technically, you know, but you would think based on the really strong relationship that they have and how completely supportive he is of her and all of her dreams. And he, he lets her do anything. He bends over backwards for her. You would think that she would feel comfortable coming to him and that she wouldn't punish him for asking her what's wrong like that. Like, at this point, it's clearly her issue. Like, whatever it is, like, it's embarrassing or she's feeling threatened or something like that. Okay, understandable. Ethan deserves a lot of things in this game based on, you know, some of the extra competitiveness and the adultery and, you know, depending on the route you take him through. But not with Amanda. Like, you know, I'm sorry, girl. Girl, I'm not feeling this. Hmm. Honey, you know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language we both understand. Bye. I pull a oh, cake. <laughs> Even better. I pull a cake out of the refrigerator and place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting is set by now. Ta-da! Dad. It took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting somewhere around sad and had to start over. Sorry you're sad, but I support you 100%. That's really sweet. He's the sweetest dad. Also, why couldn't there be a combination of this? Like, why couldn't he also do this even if he asked? Like, he could ask and still make this cake. I'm sorry, but the scenario is just really forced. 
<laughs> it's really forced and this is a game full of forced scenarios and this is the most forced of all of them. He could have still asked this. Again, there were ways that he could have really actually broken her boundaries and those have not been presented. This is beautiful. It's strawberry. Amanda gives me a big old hug. I grab some plates and forks and serve up some delicious cake. So, it's really stupid. What is? This whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. I'd love a chart, like with graphs and string attached to the wall. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? Oh no. I guess I should start from the top. So you know how Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California, right? Emma R. The best friend. Yeah. You got it. Wow, proud of you. Because if you didn't, I'd say that our relationship is too close and I need some independence. Even though that would be a sign that we weren't close enough. Quizmaster Quinn voice. <laughs> Anyways, ever since she got the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? And she's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P. I just thought it was all in my head for a while, but then I found out from Rosie M that both of the Emmas, Grace and Noah, all went to a party at Mackenzie F's on the same night they all told me they were busy studying for the Calc AB final. That does suck. Honestly, all salt aside, that is cry worthy. 18 year old me would have cried as well. <laughs> Yikes. So, another important piece of information is, uh, God, this is so embarrassing. I have a crush on Noah and, uh, knew it. All of you in the chat of that stream who were like, um, you can text a boy without liking him? Well, this game doesn't think so. It's the when Harry met Sally of games. Just like how it doesn't think that you can be a good parent and ask questions or push your child in any way. <laughs> anyway, she has a crush on Noah. Although, I mean, I think this really gives a uh, ground for those Lucian and Amanda shippers out there. Lucian would treat her better, even with all his back to alley oregano dealing. That's a thing. What? Whoa, I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Because <laughs> I'm oblivious. Okay. You're a bad liar. So are you. I learned from the worst. Anyway, so the only person I told about the crush was Emma R, and she promised not to tell anybody. I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama, so I just kept quiet and kept going about my business. Amanda sighs. And then one day I invite everybody out to get nachos at the mall, and after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they all say they're busy. Like, simultaneously. Oh man, she's being edged out. That sucks. That sucks. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips and I really, really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. Aww. Why would she think her dad wouldn't get this? I mean, this is a thing too. Like all, all people, all your parents have been young. They were young ones too. So I go to the mall anyway. I get to the food court and who do I see there? But Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah all hanging out together and eating nachos without me. What? Where are they, honey? I will find them. I have a very special set of skills. I <laughs> will use them. It gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them and I realize that Noah has his arm around Emma R, which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss. No. Yes. So I storm over there and I'm like, hey, and Grace drops a notch on her shirt because of course she does. And Emma R just like glares at me. Grace, Grace, nothing is coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the... Did she poop the bed too? The gossipy one, the boring one. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but that's not the important part. Grace is the one nobody really likes, or I guess that's me now. Oh, was she part of one of those caddy groups where there was like an out person? Girl, you don't want to be part of one of those groups. If they'll do it to somebody else, they'll turn around and do it to you. It's just like when you're in one of those groups where everybody shows the text messages and like you laugh and stuff, haha, but then it's like you know they're showing yours too, right? 
But anyway, nobody will say anything, and I'm just like, you guys suck. Which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say, but I was very angry and really embarrassed, and I just wanted to get out of there. So I left, without Nazis, might I add, which only further contributed to this awful day, and immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat asking them why they've been so weird. And I wrote another one to MR asking how long the Noah thing's been going on. And sorry, I know that's a lot of stuff. You still following? What did MR say? Oh, okay, get a load of this. MR says, you know what, let me just read it to you. Amanda pulls out her phone and reads word for word an arduously long string of text messages. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that? I cannot believe that. I cannot, I can. But I think I should say that I can't because, I mean, now is not the time to be like, yes, honey, I've seen all the things. It's time to just commiserate. Let us commiserate together. I cannot believe that. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, do I not understand what she's talking about. This is all beyond me, but I'm trying my hardest to be... So no, I cannot believe that doesn't mean that. It means like, oh my God, I agree with you. Oh. They were dating in secret for like months. So I told her that she's being a really terrible friend and she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, then just stop being my friend. And I was like, okay. And then she left me, oh, read. And then, wait, left me on read? What's that? Oh, like she saw my message and didn't reply. And I know because there are red receipts. I don't know what red receipts are. Yes, you do. You're using dad book. <laughs> you know, because of the Robert date. I know you know, Ethan. But I'm just gonna nod and pretend I understand. Gotcha. So while this is all happening, I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am because she's at least kind of being reasonable. And I'm venting to her about how pissed I am at everybody and stuff. And then out of nowhere, Noah texts me and is like, how could you say that about me? And I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything I told her to the group chat that I got kicked out of. All right, I think you lost me at screenshots, but that definitely sounds bad. Ethan, now's not the time. <laughs> There's so much more, but honestly, it's all just really stupid teenage stuff. It's not though, it's not. And why would you think that? Why would, like, what about the relationship that they've established in this game? Why would she think that he would think that? He chills at home with her watching long haul paranormal ice truckers. The bottom line is that everybody dropped me. Half of my grade hates me and now I have no friends. Amanda. I'm so sorry. I almost expected it from everyone else, but Emma R has been there since mom died. I can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. I'm not even that mad that she's dating Noah. I'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs at the remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everybody just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. Because people are the worst. The literal worst. You'll do better and you'll find cooler people. You'll go to college and meet all the best people and forget all about Emma R and P and all that nonsense. And as mad as I am at everybody, like, I miss them, Dad. Amanda looks so dejected and I almost can't take it. What could I possibly say to help? Oh. Anyways, that's it. That's the whole sordid tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know, it's pretty dumb. It's not dumb. It's really not dumb. Let me save though, because you know with Amanda, if you say the wrong thing, she's a prickly prickly porcupine and your relationship is over. It's over. I'm not over it. I will never be over it. <laughs> Slytherin grudge for life. My father will hear about this. <laughs> it's not dumb. No, it's a stupid thing to be upset over. Amanda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. I guess. Unless you've secretly been a robot who's been approximating human feelings this whole time. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long time ago. But seriously, I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. High school sucks. <laughs> I'm saving everything now because I'm so paranoid. I don't trust her mercurial teenage emotions. I know what I want to say and it's one of the first two. 
Because it's not a high school thing. Like, this can happen to you at any point in your life, unfortunately. <laughs> Anytime. This kind of childish shenanigans, some people never outgrow them, unfortunately. Um, not all friendships last forever, is how I feel. But we all see how my natural inclinations and life advice, which is great, by the way, <laughs> goes over with Amanda. Real friends don't do that. Also true. Both of those are true. I'm gonna go with not all friendships last forever. People are gonna come in and out of your life. It's just how it works. Not every friendship is gonna last forever. So cherish your friends while you have them. And when it's over, don't dwell so much on the bad stuff. You had some good times with MR, but you guys grew apart. Learn from it and keep moving forward. There are so many new friends to make and they're gonna be so much cooler than MR and the rest. Ultimately, I think this says way more about their character than it does about yours, because you're amazing. And if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. Ellipses. Huh. I'll keep that in mind. I look down at the table. Did we just eat that whole cake? Yes, we did just eat that whole cake. Well, good talk and good cake. Amanda gets up to go to her room. Before she closes her door, she turns around. Hey, Pops. Yes? Uh. Thank you. You are always welcome. Love you, Amanda. I love you too, Dad. I love you too, Dad. Yeah. There. I bent to your whim and your will. Better get the good Amanda ending. It's fine. I do wish... <laughs> I do wish that they had shared that bit of the story about how she was and her temperament before because it would have definitely impacted what I chose to do with her. <laughs> but we got it. You saw it. How do you feel about it? Also, I do, I think that should be enough. I know we said good when she came home late, but I think the fact that we got that scene should be enough to ensure us the good ending. Also, I'm not walking good back when she didn't come home from her career view. Discipline is necessary. <laughs> so I have to ask because I know some of you have played this before and it doesn't have to be about this game. It can be about anything in general. But have you ever had like a really small insignificant moment, book, movie, game, whatever, that has just completely taken you out of it and you're just really fixated on it. And for you, it really alters how you view that entire character or arc or everything. And then you're just stuck there for a little bit. And this doesn't mean it ruins your entire enjoyment of the thing. Cause I have to say this game is very enjoyable and it's very easy to walk that interaction back to get the result that you do want if you want the good ending. But for me, it was very much a, um, as you can tell, a salty moment of reflection and intense thought and perhaps very emphatic, passionate sounding, near angry sounding reflection. <laughs> Let me know if you've ever had a moment like that down below. So now I have to redo a couple of the dad second dates. I will redo them the same with the same scores. No cheating, except with Joseph. <laughs> and we'll come back to our next stream and we will go back to round threes. Third dates, let me know down below if you survived through the scorching blistering of the salt desert. Let me know which next dad third date you wanna see. If you missed last time, we have already finished with the soulmate, our soulmate, Damien, and also Brian, <laughs> where Ethan is just a tsundere. So yes, where Ethan is just tsundere. Where Ethan is just... <laughs> There's a lot of a lot going on there. It's very rom com and cliche and rivals to lovers if you're into that. So check that out if you missed it. So thank you so much. Don't worry, I am not actually as annoyed by this as I seem. I'm just very, very passionate about parenting. <laughs> See you guys very soon. So fun as always. Bye-bye. This has been Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Special thanks to all of my patrons' names on the side. There are, as always, new videos coming soon, so stay tuned, for there are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.